Hi, I'm Andrew Jones with Climate Interactive. We've been watching the terrible situation over in Ukraine and also Europe's response and their work to get free of dependence on Russian gas and Russian oil. And we thought we would use En-ROADS to ask ourselves a question. What if the whole world did the things that Europe is considering doing and doing in order to free themselves from dependence on Russian oil and gas? What if the whole world followed suit? We're going to do it using our simulator En-ROADS, which we built with MIT Sloan using the best available science. It starts with a baseline, a fairly low action, pessimistic baseline about the future, here you can see, of oil and gas. After a blip from COVID around 2020, you can see in the top left, oil continues growing in its use and levels out over time as we have some more, um, uh, run into some limits that raise the prices. There are no limits that we encounter over time on natural gas. It just grows and grows uh, throughout the century. So some of the things that have been considered in Russia in particular are discouraging natural gas. We saw uh, Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, stopped the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Other measures like that, if adopted all around the world, mind you, might in lead to some discouragement of, oil, of natural gas. Look in the top right and you can see how the blue line natural gas departs from the black a little bit less. Now, mind you, in the long term, there's still abundant energy demand driven by GDP growth. A lot of that demand going to natural gas uh, after this measure. So there's one action. The second is to promote the alternatives, the competition for natural gas, wind and solar. There's much discussion of fast tracking new wind and solar projects in Europe so that they get built faster and proposing new ones. Look over in the bottom right for the already fast growth of wind and solar. The blue line actually is a little above the, the, the black there because we have less natural gas. Some of that demand goes over to wind and solar. What if we encouraged it even more? Watch as we subsidize it more and it grows and grows even more. What if we also imagine and conceive uh, around the world storage research and development breakthroughs and improving the grid, then we get a lot more renewables, a lot less natural gas, a little less oil. Another thing that reduces dependence on natural gas around the world. Next, carbon pricing. Many Northern European countries have a carbon price. What if they're strengthened? What if the whole world does it? What if we add in a carbon border adjustment mechanism? This is like a tariff on high carbon intensity goods such as cement, such as steel. I read a good article by Philip Verliger of Niskanen, who quoted the CEO of a Russian oil company saying that such mechanisms could inflict, quote, far greater damage to Russia's economy than sanctions. So watch the effect of a carbon price on natural gas, but also in the top left on oil as well. I'm going to boost it up, up and up to be very high. What's very high? I'm calling that $135 a ton around the world. This would be a very high carbon price, but it also leads to a peaking, soft peaking here of oil, but a steeper one of natural gas when you add it to the other measures. So let's look at natural gas in the longer term, how to get that long term growth down. Well, one measure, of course, would be energy efficiency, motors and insulation and energy systems and buildings. So over here, we're already improving energy efficiency. What if we improved it faster? Look at the long term decline. If we can imagine five percent a year improvements to the energy intensity of new capital. And then we add in retrofitting. We're already retrofitting 5% infrastructure a year. What if that went up to 20? You'll notice a little bit of a steeper fall of natural gas in the 2020s and 2030s as we do more aggressive retrofitting. There was a proposal. Bill McKibben wrote an interesting article in, uh, in his newsletter about the possibility of 50 million heat pumps being added into Europe. Heat pumps shifting a lot of the heating load from natural gas over to electricity. He even said, why not use the defense 
Production, Defense Production Act in the United States to make more of these heat pumps, send them over to Europe. The test here is what if we had this around the world, India, China, South Africa, Mexico, Brazil, all over the world, notice aggressive electrification brings emissions down even more from the long term of natural gas. Now on oil, you'll notice I haven't done anything about bioenergy. We're concerned about the climate impacts. We have a study that we'll post in the notes that says that bioenergy could be even worse than coal for the climate. Go read that study. We're instead encouraging here more electrification following Norway's lead. Such aggressive adoption of electric vehicles in Norway. What if we had more? Watch the oil line shrink, fall much steeper, and then also energy efficiency. Put all this together, all of those measures, and what you get is oil peaking here in the 2020s and falling steeply. Natural gas peaking in the 2020s, falling steeply. Less dependence on petrostates and all of the security implications of that around the world if we could pull this off. Not to mention, we didn't even show the air quality benefits, something that addresses environmental justice, reducing air pollution from energy, PM 2.5 emissions, and also biodiversity, species losing more than 50% of their range going from that black line down to blue. Much, much better. Now it's much better if we add in what can be done in deforestation, in a global methane pledge, and following that, grow in some trees. These are the measures that can get us well below two degrees. Put all these together, less dependence on petrostates, addressing climate change, addressing environmental justice and reaping co-benefits, and improving other measures such as biodiversity. I hope this was helpful. Go to Twitter and you can see this scenario being posted. Hope this is useful. Go get them, everybody.